All right, thanks for staying with us now. <clears throat> a leader is someone who can see how things can be improved and who rallies people to move towards that better version or better vision. Leaders can work towards making their vision a reality while putting people first. It is universally, um, universally acknowledged that good leaders change the world and people don't simply become good leaders. It requires conscious effort and hard work and utmost determination. Now, the brain drain in the Nigerian health care system did not start out of the blues. The doctors and health workers have been dealing with unpaid salaries, declining work environment, and dilapidated infrastructure for the longest time. And this can only be linked to bad leadership. So today we are asking, what is exemplary leadership? And is this bill mandating doctors to practice in Nigeria for five years the way to go? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with a hashtag WayShow. All right, so let me just quickly give an overview. Now, this bill has reached or passed the second um, reading. And if approved or if signed into law, what it means is that after your housemanship, from what I understand, is that, you know, normally you would do your two-year housemanship. Mm -hmm. After your housemanship, you would not be given a license as a medical doctor. Your license will be withheld. Then you are then mandated to work five years within Nigeria. And this bill was proposed. I can't remember the senators, uh, the mem house member's name now that proposed that bill. And this is his own, he has, he has thought really hard and long. And this is the idea, or this yeah. is the solution that could come to him. That why don't we make our medical students, I mean medical when they graduate and everything, why don't we get them to stay five years before they leave? Let's not give them their license. First of all, what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, personally, I think that we... A lot of times, act be w before we think through the consequences of our actions. Mm. Putting the cat before the horse. Most of the time. Our leaders, from their actions, show a lot of times that they do not have people in mind when they're making these decisions. When I heard, when, you know, when I was looking at this bill and the story behind it, I remembered when I was in the university and I did a five-year course that I ended up graduating six years later. And there were medical students who spent up to 10 years in school reading medicine. And then I finished... That was supposed to be how many years? Medical, uh, uh, I think it's seven years, I think, and then you do housemanship one year. Mm. So I, but with strike, you end up adding like two years. Mm. So say ten years, and then you finish, and then you go do youth service, and then you tell me to add another five years before I can decide to take my life in my hands. And a lot of times, I'm asking myself. You will say again, Madam Consideration, if you were the one that spent all that time in school and you wanted a better life, is this the path that you would have wanted to go? <laughs> Medical students, people who are looking for better, because you've not created that environment that can help me to thrive. Leadership is about creating environments that helps people to thrive. You want to forcefully keep me for five years. You have not created a conducive environment for me to be able to thrive. And then you want to enforce what you think is best for me. Mm. And that's why, you know, to a large extent, so it's, I feel that this is very inconsiderate of our leaders because we always like to cut the branches without going to the deep root of the matter 
What <laughs> is causing these doctors, nurses, and medical practitioners to want to leave their country in the first place? What is causing them that urge to move is because the environment is not created for them to thrive. I know very intelligent doctors and medical practitioners, but if they tell you how some of them have not been paid, how what they pay cannot even help them to, to live the kind of life, not even frivolous mm -hmm. now, yeah. just basic ab ab ability to be able to just so let me even add, because that's what is being flashed on this end. Let me just add, then you can continue with the conversation. Yeah. Add a bit of context to what you've said. Mm -hmm. So it says, as it stands, Abia State Government employed doctors uh, are being owed 24, 24 months, months for those working in the Abia State University Teaching Hospital, right? Now, the resident doctors working in this same uh, Abia State University Teaching Hospital are being owed 22 months while the doctors working in general hospitals, otherwise called the Health Management Board, are being owed 13 months' salary. And the response to that was that they need to come and work so that they can generate the funds to pay them. Hmm. I don't know if we think and we put ourselves in the position of the human being who is at the receiving end of these things before we make the comments that we make. If it was your son or your daughter that was put in this position, will you stand up for it? That's the question. Mm -hmm. And this is about exemplary, exemplary leadership. How does it show me that you have my interests at heart when you make decisions that do not empower me, that do not help me to thrive? So I feel that it, they need to really sit down and look at this situation a lot more holistically. Okay, so in line with what you've just said, right? Yakubu Olorikbe, that's the chairman of the um, Senate Committee on Health, described the proposed strategy as inadequate to address the multifaceted drawback he called it of the nigerian healthcare and incapable of resolving the key issues like norma just said that makes the local terrain unattractive to medical workers now he said that efforts should be directed towards improving the healthcare okay, system yeah. giving con making the environment conducive for workers that even if at all that medical students you're claiming because the government's claim is that they have subsidized medical um, this and i'm trying to get the costing of the fee that they are being subsidized, that they've subsidized, highly subsidized medical um, fees for the students. So he's saying that, you know what, why don't you even give medical students the option to either pay the market rate fee or the subsidized fee? So if I pay market rate fee, you can't come and tell me that you want to tie me down for five years. I'd rather pay it and get my freedom. Then if I'm paying the subsidized fee, he then even went ahead to say you must give them two options. One of the options would be that they refund the money upon completion of their training or they then work for that um, period of time, which is the five years that is being proposed. But you can't just wake up. You know, this is somebody, a medical doctor within the committee there. Mm -hmm. He said you cannot just wake up and bring this kind of blanket, uh, what's it called? Now, let's even go back because we're talking about exemplary leaders and I want you to come in. If you really want to lead by example, right, have you in any way encouraged a better healthcare structure in Nigeria? We know that, okay, the other day, Professor Yemi Oshibanjo, our vice president, went to a hospital in Ikeja to go do some surgery. We celebrated them. Mm. And we said, okay, thankfully, at least somebody decided to stay within the country. He mm. didn't leave the country. And this, the hospital Get actually, you know, they mm. actually did a fantastic job catering to him. But we know how many months our president stayed outside of the country in the bid to get a better medical, um, what's it called, health care. We know how many of our leaders, right, that go outside of the country to get medical care, right? So if you really want to really solve the problem, why don't you lead by example and say, you know what, for the four years that I will be um, elected, 
or um, appointed any any anything that has to do with government official right i will lead by example by ensuring that everything i do i live i eat i breathe nigeria why do you have to live outside of the country you know why are you not leading that that pact you know you just spearheading the movement let me hear your thoughts jennifer you know time and time again the government has shown how inconsiderate and unfair they are when i saw this bill i was very upset I didn't want to believe that it was true because if we actually notice a lot of our governments or governors or house of even the president leave the shores of Nigeria to go abroad to seek medical, medical um, treatment. services or treatment. And then they stay there for a long time. Now you're asking the doctors to stay back for five years and work here compulsorily because you don't want them to leave. Now, the healthcare system is actually very terrible. If I get sick today and I get to the hospital, it's at the end of the day, you just have to ask God, please do your work because you don't trust anything that is happening there. Even the drugs that you're being given, you don't trust it. You'll probably be treating a particular illness. You can treat it for months. And sometimes they'll probably diagnose you wrongly. And this is, this is a time where we need to put in more money into the medical um on the healthcare system now um i think it was last week or so i saw a, i saw um a budget that was released i can't remember how what they released the budget for and then um it was around it was it was in the billions we're talking 20 to 40 billion and then when i saw it i'm like why are you people always giving this huge amount for things that are irrelevant to the society it is irrelevant to us well can i just tell you the one i saw Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it 12 billion naira to purchase 10 fire trucks? Was that yeah. the one you're yes. talking about? Yeah. I saw that. Mm. And I was very confused. Because I remember a day where they were um where they were commissioning a fire um service station. When the governor got there and then they brought out the fire truck, they no only water. had like five there was no water. Mm. The truck itself was very dusty, it was dirty. It was very obvious that they didn't just buy that truck. <laughs> they've had the truck. It's the truck they've been using since. And when you look at these things, it's very shameful. And I think the government and people who are passing this bill need to be ashamed of themselves. Because if you're, you're thinking about the healthcare system and you feel like the best solution that came to your mind is this, and you need to go back to your drawing board or you leave completely, because I don't get it. So let me say something here, because there's a research that came out that says Ibute, um, hospitals such as the Federal Medical Center Ibute Meta have had a turn, um, have had to turn to task shifting and flexible um, arrangement that allows for job hopping to certain services, um, certain services running. Now the hospital, they said, had lost a total of 152 workers, mm -hmm. <laughs> including 38 doctors, 42 nurses, 30 combined laboratory scientists, pharmacists, and um, psych psychotherapists, and 42 others, just between January to August 2022. Now, Nigeria is home to about, of course, you know, 82 million poor. Huh? Poor with health expenditure uh, per person. This, I mean, so we are, we are spending like $71, right? indirectly offsetting our healthcare bills. But go to countries like the U U U.S. They are capable of spending at least $10,921 in healthcare spending per individual. UK and Saudi Arabia spent about $4,300 um, and um, $1,300 respectively on each citizen. Do you understand? Most of these countries that you see our medical doctors migrating to, they prioritize their citizens. They spend money on health care for their mm -hmm. citizens. So that is why you will see that the doctor is confident that if I do my job, if I know my job, I'll get paid. So are you as a leader, you are just waking up and saying, now, now look at the numbers, very staggering numbers. About 6,068 Nigerian medical doctors moved to the UK in the last seven years, according to the General Medical Council of the United Kingdom. So now even this one said they are actually afraid because if they leave it, every, all our doctors will go. So I get their law saying that they are trying to control yeah. it so that we don't have that deficiency. The doctor, because we're supposed to have this topic on Friday. Yeah. The doctor that me I called, <laughs> I told the Bolala to reach out to. He was on his way out. It's not on his way. 
They were just landing Canada. <laughs> they were, so she, she sent a voice note to Obolola oh, that, ah, my darling, that we just landed. I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's like even the doctor has jumped She has left. <laughs> That you know, and the the doctor she didn't recommend it. I'm looking at that one. The way his, his the way his picture was looking, he's looking like he has prepared he has his, pre his professional he has, profile. He has packed his to leave. We are discussing exemplary leadership in respect to the bill mandating doctors to practice in Nigeria for five years. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Weisho Africa one with the hashtag Weisho. So, Norma, you touched on a lot of salient points that even me, I didn't even think about it. First of all, I will spend how many months of strike? So, you have already taken out. Don't forget that some of these people did not go to school early. So, maybe, let's say, average. I entered school when I was 25. You come out when you you're come in your out, 30s. I come out when I'm in my 30s. I'm mm -hmm. required to do NYSC. Then, you know, mandate me. You... So, because, again, now, without the license, right? Without the license, would you be able to get your what you deserve in terms of payment even we know that the payment is not it but if i am not a licensed doctor isn't it even illegal for me to be practicing, practicing. without a license do you understand mm -hmm. so what do we what would the government so th this is like that's why the the person in the committee said this one is not the way because in in the bid to try to want to even implement this you are violating a lot of laws Absolutely. there is the freedom for movement which is why people are saying that when we are arguing that our legislators should not leave the shores of this country to go and get medical um, care. The argument is that there is a law freedom that gives them movement. freedom of movement. Mm -hmm. And you see, the only thing we can tell them is that when you that are choice. going, make sure that you are using your own pocket money, not taxpayers' Their money. money yeah. But how would you know which money that they are using? Mm -hmm. Is it labeled? You know, so the, in, even in the bid to want to even bring up this, this law that they are trying to move to whatever, you are violating a lot of laws because as a medical doctor, you are not authorized to practice, you understand, without a license. You know? So, and if you ask me, this will only create an avenue for people to find other ways. Okay, so I have a friend, sorry, Noma. He was in 200 level, I think, when his father moved him out of the country. Mm. And today, he's doing exceptionally well outside the shores of this country. He's a top, you know, this is a position, first of all, that he would not have smelt if, if he was he in was Nigeria. Here. Because first of all, you, those kind of positions, is the ones that you have gray hair, mm. that they will give you those positions, right? But I'm saying to you that if that is the case, medical students will just wait till they are like in their third year or their fourth year, and they will just carry their bag and go and complete the studies and continue there. Because you, you really cannot tie. People will find a way they will out, find, out of this. Always, it's not possible. Always, always. You know, the, oh, the thing way. you should have been thinking about as a leader is that, okay, what can I do differently that would make people not run away from me? Do you understand? That is you showing that, okay, yes, I can make this thing work. And, you know, being an example. So your own children now, have you mandated them to stay in the country? Because... That is one angle. Some other people will just refuse to study medicine. They will decide to say, I beg, I beg, let me go to a course that is not stressing my life. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, do you know that some people are willing, it's so bad that people are willing to throw away the 10 years or 12 years that they, they consider it a waste. They would rather start all, all over, over again. again. Yeah. I've seen people who had no business in the medical field going to go and read nursing. Mm -hmm abroad just so that they can have a stake at a good life or whatever they think will solve their problems so that's how resilient nigerians are mm. whatever you try to succumb them to they will find a way and they're finding that way this five years is not the solution to the problem because they're not even looking at the problem itself there's a reason why people are living in the first place and Nigerians, funny enough, are the kind of people that... Do you know how many people that are out there that if Nigeria was working, they would... They have no business in being a outside the country. In a heartbeat. They, they have, have no back. business being outside the country. Mm. They will all come back. It's about making Nigeria work. It's about making Nigeria the kind of place that they can come back to and feel that they are Nigerians. They have a stake in the country. And that's why we're talking exemplary leadership. What are we doing differently to show 
Nigerians that there is a direction, right? We have a, we plan. Have a plan. We have a goal mm -hmm. to make Nigeria better, to make Nigeria desirable enough to call back all of those ex resources that are being trained outside the country to be useful, to be resourceful in Nigeria. Isn't it even That's shameful, what it is. Norma? Is it not shameful that the best of the best, right, in the medical field, globally, are Nigerians? Is it not shameful to you Currently, that you are trying to pass this kind of bill? Currently, we have over 11,000 trained Nigerian trained doctors in the UK alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not talking about Canada. You're not talking about America. And even if you go to some of those places, you'll find out that the top uh, uh, medical practitioners are Nigerians. Nigerians have the ability to thrive anywhere. You just root them in, in the place that brings out the best in them. And you will see that even the ones that were considered not very intelligent here go outside and they thrive. So it will tell you that the problem lies within. It lies within us and the kind of leadership that is not taking us anywhere. Mm. And that's, uh, you know, I don't know, but for future reference, really, is an eye opener for us. Who are we choosing to lead us in the first place? Because if the choose? person has no, <laughs> or the no, one that no, chose no vision, <laughs> no leader, no no direction, then we are doomed. I think they need to start thinking more. I, we've gone past the time of just coming up with things and saying whatever is in your heart or in your mind, so you can sound smart. We need to actually like put in the work, and people need to start seeing the result. For a profession where they work round the clock, their income is very, very poor. poor. It's and now in a situation where you have a lot of doctors who are leaving, you have one doctor taking on the shifts of three people. Three. So you are exhausted. More than that. So when you're exhausted, they are drained yeah. themselves. How do you how do you perform well? On top of that exhaustion, yeah. you're not added. Plus they refuse to pay you your salary. You add it there. It's like Pay these people. They're supposed to be one of the highest paid. Yeah, and in um, because um, you're talking about in lives. Nigeria. You're talking about lives of human beings, isn't it? And that's why you know you had mentioned earlier about um, um, Saudi Arabia and um, some of the countries mm. that put a lot of stake in the medical healthcare because they're thinking about the healthcare of their citizens. So these are people that are put placing priority on human life. And so you're not thinking about the human, the, the doctors that are supposed to be saving these lives to look for a way to, you know, give them incentives that will encourage them to keep saving these lives. So let me, let me even, because we are focusing on doctors, let's move a bit because it's healthcare workers, yeah. right? In 2020, Nigeria had 1,200 1, 1, nurses and midwives or 1.2 nurses and midwives. I think that's 1,200 and um, about 400 physicians for every 1,000 inhabitants slightly higher than sub-saharan africa average but worse than many of its regional pairs such as ghana Na uh, namibia gambia as well as um, as structural and aspirational pair countries such as indonesia and vietnam nothing shortages leads to error high mobility and mortality rates so now according to world bank Nigeria has the highest mortality rate. under five uh, mortality rate in the world with 117 deaths per 1,000 life birth. Hmm. 117 so children will die in, in 1,000. So um, there are problems that we are facing in this country. And if we had leaders that were strategic, you understand that understood what it what what it what it, it 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 takes to be a leader. You would this would be the like you know when you I, I think this idea would not have even come up in your in your plan for solution. Mm. It's like there is a problem, right? The tree is bringing out bad fruits, bad fruits, and you are saying that ah okay no 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 let us uh, find a way to ensure that maybe we take the whatever out. No. 
there is a root cause. If a tree is not producing well or is not bringing out good fruit, what you're supposed to do is continue to inject that tree with loads of, loads of vitamins and um, what's it called, um, um, treatments and all of that. Just keep injecting the roots. With time, all that thing will blossom and the fruit will start to come out plush and, and lump. The healthcare structure in Nigeria is very, very poor. You know, I've said this thing several times that I know people that if they were in Nigeria, they would have been dead, buried, forgotten. Do you understand? Because of the health challenges that they had. But because they're in other climes. And it's not to say that healthcare or in other parts of the world are perfect. No. No. It's, beyond, it's, it's, it's far from perfect. But what happens is even the problem we're having in Nigeria is actually deeper than just the healthcare. Is the value to human life human lives, yeah. that we have not attached because if we understood that this person is a human being and must be cared for, deserving. is deserving of love, is deserving of a better life, is deserving of life, you know, in itself, you will treat that person differently. You will look for things that would ensure that that person's standard of living is better. Other parts of the world, of course, they don't get problem again. That's why they, they look for problems they won't give themselves. Do you understand? Mm. And try to look for the right, my right, your right, they, them, and all of that. We have real issues in this country. We've not solved power situations in this country. Education. We've not, our educational system is going down the drain oh, by no, the minute. the healthcare system. Healthcare system has always been, you know, a bit epileptic. Um, what's it called? The infrastructural challenges and deficits that we have. Don't forget that these doctors have families. The nurses mm -hmm. have families. These healthcare workers have families, right? If you do not prioritize them and say that they matter, how do you expect them, you know, to put priority in the work that they do? Mm. Have you not heard of doctors slumming and dying, you know? Have you not heard of them? Or nurses too? So a lot of people leave the country out of frustration. There is a frustration behind the leaving of the country. Mm -hmm. And you are now saying that... Uh, for us they not don't to, even see it. Don't think. No, they don't even see it. I mean, you're sitting down and just coming up with this bill and saying, okay, we enforce it. And, you know, it's, it's painful. It's painful because you don't see the plight of the people. You don't see it from their perspective. And that's another thing about leadership. It's about seeing, feeling the pulse of the people. What are they going through? How can we solve their problems? You're, if you see things from your own perspective enough, is uh, alone, it's very easy for you to come up with situations like this and pass a bill or consider a bill in the first place. But if you are the one on the hot seat, it will be different. If you were the Imagine doctor. that you are the doctor mm -hmm. or the nurse who has to go through this, mm -hmm. then you will reconsider. And that's where we want leaders to begin to come from. Where you feel a place of empathy, the pain of the Nigerian citizen. And you know, if you listened to, if you had listened strongly to what's his name, GRV's campaign, I used to bring it back. And he's always, he kept on emphasizing on empathy, right? Yeah. And it, I think it's the biggest thing we lack in leadership in this country. We don't have empathetic leaders because if you put yourself, like you rightly said, in the shoes of these healthcare workers, you will not be proposing this bill that you're proposing. It will, not even go, it, will not even, it will not even cross your mind. Because you will know that the problem is not because... I mean, people... You think people generally enjoy, you know, living in another man's yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. The, being cost, a second -class the cost citizen. of living in, in another country. You can't compare it if you were living in your own country. I told you, no man, now, I went to the embassy. You could see it clearly this thing was coming. This person's visa fee was a community, was a effort. community effort to get that visa, um, the money to pay for the visa fee. Everybody just wants to leave. It's, we're not even talking about healthcare workers alone. We're talking about Nigerians in general wanting to leave. And you, know and you can all you can thing. think about is, okay, let us make sure that we seize their license for five years. Come on. And sometimes people who are that leaving, was the best you know, sometimes when it. people leave, people think that, oh, things are going well for them. That's why they left. No. There are people who have left well and good paying jobs just to go abroad and do menial jobs. 
they are over there suffering. A lot of them are suffering, but they would rather suffer and toil and be there because they know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel mm. than to be here where every time you walk, the government comes and scatters it. So basically, you have to go back to Every square effort one. you make and it does, is it, in it, futility. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. I've actually come to believe that sometimes these people have put themselves in people's shoes. They know how other people feel, but they just don't care. Hmm. I hear some yeah. people are trying to call the WhatsApp line. We're sorry, we don't take calls on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, just send your messages. Um, um, but not, not, not calls today, please. <laughs> it is well. So what do we think would have been a better solution if we were to help this young man that is trying to pass a beam? <laughs> what do you think we should have? What, what should the proposal look like or the proposed bill look like? I think part of solving problems is having a dialogue with even the people that have the problem. Mm. Part of it is having conversations with the, I don't know, medical, medical association, association. Yeah. to say, how can we, Come you in. are the ones in the hot seat. Yeah. What can we do differently to, you from to help people to alleviate the problems? And let them even air their views. Let's see, that's part of leadership, mm. having a dialogue with the people, having conversations and finding out what is the problem and where did we go wrong? What can we do differently? We're not saying that it's going to happen overnight, but when you start asking the right kind of questions, the right answers will begin to come as well. And um, that will be a start. They will know and they will have the feeling that, okay, it's like you are now seeing me as a human being. Because a lot of times we make decisions without even thinking about how it affects the other person. So they don't, so in their own mind, they, okay, you didn't consider me, you didn't consult me in the first place. So why do you think that I, I should, should care? care? Mm -hmm. But when they are brought into the situation, they can let them know these are our challenges. If you can do this, day, and then you can come to a compromise. Mm. We may not be able to solve all your problems in one sitting, but we can gradually get there. That's part of leadership. When you're able to show people that, okay, we have a direction, we have a plan, we have a goal, and if we all work together, we can get there. We can accomplish our our goals and our dreams, then it would be a win-win situation. Hmm. Hmm. I like that. I 100% okay. agree with you, honestly. And um, after having a dialogue, I mean, if you've spoken to doctors, you hear that. I mean, we just read one, Abia State, 24 months. That's basically two years. So imagine not having an income, a monthly income for two years. Hmm. How are you able to feed? And I You think have children that go to school. It's, it, it's important that they pay attention and restructure the monthly income of doctors. You need to start paying them well, start well, paying them well. Yeah. And then after that, you start working on the healthcare system. These hospitals are dilapidated. If there are equipments that you need to change, start changing them. If there are new equipment you need to bring in, bring them in. Give people a conducive place to be in. I can't go to the hospital and um, I'm admitted in the hospital and there's no lights. Hmm. What does that even mean? And you are on the operating yes. theatre. Yeah, you're having a no surgery. Like, I'll, I'll <laughs> I just stay in my house. Yeah, I was going to also add to that that also give incentives. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, now uh, I know some organizations because you are working for them. If you have children and probably maybe they have schools or something, they subsidize the fees for your children. You know, so those kinds of little perks yeah. are incentives that they would also look at and say, okay. This is worth, you know, worth my while. Um, you know, in the, in the bid for dialogue, you would uncover a lot of things. Yeah. And some would argue is that, some people would argue is that it's not like this, our leaders don't know the problem. But they've chosen to turn a blind eye to the problems, no problem. you know. But I choose to believe that the, if they knew better, they would do better. Our leaders really don't understand what it is. Because you know what? I've seen people, just because of the, the motivation that they give the people they are, that are subordinate to them, they work their hearts out without being paid. People, it's not today that they owe salary. Mm -hmm. But you see, it is because of the motivation that they get. They know genuinely that this is my boss. So 
we are having a rough time in the company, but I'll stick with you and I'll work with you. Because those leaders, you know, are leaders that, you know, they will hold your hand and say, you know what, if I grow, we grow together. Mm -hmm. It's not all, it's not every time that is about money. And that is what I even want some of our leaders to understand. Yeah. It goes beyond money. You know, that empathy is very important. That you are showing the example that we are in a mess as a country. We are all in this mess together. And How we'll, do we we'll, fix we'll, it? We'll ride, rise above it. Even in your lifestyle, in your dealings, in everything, right? If you do it that way and the people see you genuinely that this leader is actually for us. Yes, we might be going through a rough time, but we are ready to rough it up with him. That is the kind of leader we're looking for. And if we do not get those kind of leaders, it is impossible for things like this not to continue. It is impossible. People will continue to leave your country because they don't believe that you have they will their find best a way. interest at heart. They will always find do we have way. messages? Oh, we yes, run out we of do. time. Quickly. Yes, we do. Okay. Long ones for some hey, reason. Quick, cool. <laughs> Good evening, uh, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Exemplary leadership bill mandating doctors to practice ni in Nigeria for five years. It is so sad and frustrating when someone is made to spend more than he or she is supposed to spend in a university due to one problem or the other. That madness has to stop in Nigeria. While doctors relocate abroad is maybe because they do not have the facilities to work with or they are poorly paid and they go to look for greener pastures. Hmm. We need to encourage them to stay and not go. Sister Uwa, your countenance is justified concerning that video. Hmm. It is r really tiring. Disturbing. Even me, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy and excited to have my dear beautiful sister. No, no my back. back. Hallelujah. Bye. Coach. Thank you so much, Daniel Elo. <laughs> yeah, and then we have one from ah, Austin as without well. Without Austin, oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We've run out of time. We'll continue the conversation tomorrow that it is important, it is almost impossible to command um, without being an exemplar and to lead without helping those whom you wish to take into your laps. Well, sorry, Austin. We're sorry, anybody. We couldn't read your messages. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Mm.